I know, I know, every single time you try to commit some changes on your project, you gotta run a lot of stuff like ESLinting, Prettier, you need to run some scripts, some custom stuff, and you can't figure out if these stuff are staged or not, and you're getting a lot of issues, a lot of really weird errors, and even sometimes you're actually writing meaningless and very bad kind of like commit messages and super useless that doesn't make a lot of sense for you and the other team members and it's just like blaming you for stuff that you're actually doing wrong. Well, in this particular video tutorial, we're gonna go through the best developer setup that you can actually have on your projects that you absolutely should do and should run before committing any changes. And this is from like checking if the commits are right and if you're having like the right commit structures and if you're running commits right and the commits are actually uh, meaningless and the messages are meaningless and to something like lean stage to have only the list stage files to go through eslinting and custom scripts that you're gonna write from like prettier and stuff like that and so much more to improve your deployment kind of workflow and have a better way much better developer experience. So we're all familiar with ESLint and the power of ESLint and what it actually does for us as developers in terms of like linting and finding problems and fixing some problems automatically for us. For example, we got a project in here. Whenever we try to commit or put a new change and push it to our repository, we want to run ESLint before doing any of that simply because we want to make sure that whatever changes are going to be pushing are like consistent, they have no syntactical or some sort of like conventional issues are going on and obviously for ESNs because you're going to have tons of awesome rules or maybe some base kind of configuration we're using and extending so we're going to have it actually checking that for us automatically and maybe fixing some potential problems as well and because we want to run linting every single time for every developer so for example we got the pre-commit hooks in here and what the pre-commit does it basically runs a particular script you give it before it does any commit and that's called pre-commit and here I'm specifying yarn lint so now whenever we do stage the files and everything and we try to put a commit the yarn linting or the linting process is going to run before you're actually going to do the commit so usually when we do a commit for example committing some changes in here making sure we commit our stuff we get the script actually running and ESLint is going to run before everything in here so we're already familiar with that and already works pretty awesomely but in this particular way there's one teeny tiny and sort of pretty serious problem that a lot of developers get annoyed by which is for example in here this particular thing is going to run ESLint for every single file on the project. So it doesn't take in consideration if that file has changed or if that file is staged or something, it doesn't care about that at all. So obviously for us as developers and what we want to do with linting is actually only run the linting process and run ESLint on the staged kind of files. So let's imagine we got this example. So for example, we got some changes. We got a new component called card.tsx that is on tracks that just got newly added to the, you know, to the project and I don't want to stage that, I don't want to commit that. And we got some other changes to basically the up.tsx, which is staged, and I put that in a stage process. So that's what I got for particularly like what I want to commit right now. I only want to commit to these files, and I don't want to commit this, I don't want to stage it. Now, for example, if I try to run ESLint on this, I'm going to do another commit, like git commit, um, something like that. If I do that, this will go ahead and run all the actual files on the directory. As you in here, we got card.tsx, even though it's not like staged, it only like has the changes, it run ESLint on it, it's giving us really weird errors because I don't want to commit that. This is not staged. I don't want to commit it. I don't want to put in version control because maybe I'm still getting or having some other work to do on that that is like not finished just yet. And still, it's given us some issues. And for that particular problem, there is a solution and really awesome library that's going to help us a lot more, which is called Lint Stages. So Lint Stage in here is a library that allows you to only run ESLint and particular scripts that you specify only for staged files and doesn't care about other non-staged files. It's only going to do the script and it's going to do the whatever you provide scripts actually going to provide on the configuration file only for staged files. So to use the lint stage library, you always seem to just yarn add lint stage and make sure it's actually a div dependency. And once you do that, you go to whatever pre-commit hook you're using. So for example, I'm using, you know, Haskin here with a pre-commit. I remove the yarn lint and it replaced that completely with the yarn lint stage. And I'm going to get concurrent to be false. So most likely because by default, it has some concurrent parallels to run that, but you don't want to do that because sometimes it gives you really weird errors. Awesome. 
The next thing you want to provide is the configuration file. So link stage RC, which is right over here as well. So this file, basically what it takes is actually a globe patterns of like uh, file extensions, and it's going to take an array of scripts that are going to be running for those particular files you specify. So for example, here for JavaScript, Java, GSX, TypeScript, and TSX, we want to run pretty to your right. Then I want to run ESLint fix. Then finally, I want to run ESLint. And maybe like for JSON, I want to just run pretty here because there is no ESLint for JSON. And those three scripts are going to be running like, you know, it's, they're not going to be in parallel, they're not going to be concurrent. So you're going to run one after the other. And obviously, this is going to make way much easier for us as developers, and it's going to improve the developer experience so much more. Now, if we try the same scenario we did before with the card in here, which is untracked and has some issues, and we only want to like commit or stage the app.tsx in here, I want to only commit these changes, and I want to leave this alone. And I don't want to run ES links on this one, the card.tsx. So if I try this one, I'm going to do git commit, click enter. And let's see if this is going to run as you see, it's way much better than like the first look, it gives you exactly the steps it's actually doing. And it works, right. And it's not actually taking into consideration that card.tsx. And it makes stuff real easy It gives you like preparing link stage running text for stage files, applying modification, cleaning up temporary files. And it does so much more for you. Also, the link stage in here has plenty of other options that you can use not only for stage files, but it's a really awesome tool that can actually help with running small custom scripts before or like whenever you're trying to do a commit or a post commit or during a commit, like where however you want to use it, it's super powerful. The second most important step that I run for every commit or before every single commit on any project I work on is linting commit or the commit lint. So as you clearly see from the name itself, like commit linting, you know that it's actually going to take your commits and actually link them in in like a contextual kind of like a manner. So it takes the commit message and try to parse it and it tries to read it and it tries to exactly tell you uh, if you're like following a particular convention or maybe following a specific specification for running your commits or not. This one is actually going to allow you to enforce a particular commit linting kind of strategy in a convention to like whatever you're going to put and it's going to obviously it's going to throw out problems if you don't follow these particular conventions. And this actually follows this conventional commits if you go to the website conventional commits.org. So this is basically a specification for adding human and machine readable meaning to commit messages. And if you look into this like a little bit more further, you're going to know exactly what's going on in here. So this kind of like follows the Semver kind of specification and how everything works and try to make the commits a little bit more readable for humans. And they have like a particular context as well as like a specific structure uh, to put your commits and make them way much easier to read and so much simpler. So for example, what you want to do is actually have a type in here, then have like a scope for like a file or a scope of your project you works on and a description of exactly what you did and like the number of types available like effects feature breaking change. Um, uh, maybe you want to do like CI doc style refactor and so much more and maybe like for description or for a subject, this also can be called the subject. So exactly you, you can provide description like hello provided config object to extend other configs or something like that. Or maybe you want to do something like Oh, I worked on a feature particularly on the API side. And you, you provide like an exclamation more that means this is a breaking change. And you give it like a description, like send an email to the customer when a product is shipped, you can do a lot more and you can read more about these specifications. And you can go to the file like the RFC of 2119 uh, to exactly see what you can do and how you can use that specification in your project. So simply to install the commit link in here, there is actually a commit link, which is a CLI, which is going to like use whatever configuration you provide is. And the best configuration currently or the like the conventional config you can use right now is like commit link config conventional, which is provided by the commit links team as well. Uh, as well as I told before, you can it actually has a plugin system. So you can write your own convention if you want to. So you can simply do your and add and as a dev in here and dev dependency, obviously. So to set up commit lane, you basically and simply all you need to do is actually add a configuration file. So commit lanes .config .cgs in here in in the root directory of your projects. And make sure you extend the config conventional uh, sort of like plugin you just installed. So to make sure it follows that particular conventional uh, sort of like committing and linting and everything. Uh, so for this basically to be able to work fine. And the next thing obviously is to add a Haskey hook in here. So for simply we can use this particular kind of like script in here, which does MPX Haskey add, which adds a commit message hook. 
and he adds that right into the body in here. So basically, I'm just going to copy this one right here. Uh, and this simply to do Haskey created commit message. So if you go inside of this one, if you look at this, particularly this is going to run MPX and it's going to run like a shell kind of commands. And this will go ahead and run commit lens, which is just like the dependency we just installed, and it's going to make sure it does the edit. So now let's say, for example, I'm going to do a git add, I'm going to do a git commit and saying, Oh, for example, the commit message I'm going to have in here is fixing current component. So I click enter and see if this is going to work first, obviously, it's going to run the link stage with ES links and pretty your right as curious as these are the steps it does. Second, it's going to run the commit links like library for us in here or CLI to check the commit message, whether it actually follows the convention or not, or whether it follows the rules you provided or not. And unfortunately, it does not. So for it's curious in here, this is the input, this is the commit message exactly. And it tells us subject may not be empty and time may not be empty. And if you remember, just like a couple of seconds ago, when we were looking at the conventional commits in here, or particularly, we can look more of into the details like config conventional, which is the configuration we just installed and we were using, it tells you exactly what's going on. So for example, you need to provide a type first, which is a type enum. And these are the types that are available. And this is the type in here. Second, the type case should be lowercase. Um, the also the type should not be empty, because it's required. And we got the subject case should be uh, some sort of like, as well as it's to lowercase. So you can't do uppercase in here, because it's actually going to fail. And the subject cannot be empty, we're providing empty subjects, and subject cannot have a full stop, like a dot at the end in here, and max length as well so much more, right? So to make sure we're following the convention, we're running the right commit messages is you always do just git commit dash m. And we just to first provide because oh, we are saying here fixing current components, which means we got like a fix kind of type in here, I can give it the scope, which is a card component. So I'm going to give it card, and I'm giving it a colon and here I can give it the description. So adding title to the card, um, something like this to make sure it works or something. Okay, I'm going to get git commits and link stage going to run again, it's going to make sure it run ES lanes and everything. Next, it's going to run that and that is actually working fine. As you see, adding title the card way works fine, I create a mod and it put a commit particularly in a really simple way. I'm going to do git log and as you see in here, this is the log and as you see it's a fix card adding title to the card to make sure it works. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching. I really hope you guys enjoyed and catch you hopefully in the next ones.